welcome back to the lecture series on performative gender and religions in South Asia. Today we are going to discuss two more folk theatre forms, Ras Lila and Ghumar. So, starting with Ras Lila, we see that it is a type of religious operatic play devoted to the image of uh, Krishna and Krishna's life, Krishna being a very popular icon in India and by extension in South Asia. Ras Lila particularly uh, emphasizes Krishna's youthful and lovelorn years uh, and it is celebrated in Uttar Pradesh, Odisha and Manipur. Ras Lila developed in uh, villages and cities that are associated with uh, Krishna's life the, the folklores, the different folk tales uh, associated with uh, Krishna's life uh, and uh, we see that uh, performances also take place in the southern parts of Delhi and we see that uh, performances take place in the southern areas of Delhi. Uh, young boys in Ras Lila play the principal protagonist Krishna his uh, beloved Radha as well as the gopis or the cowherd girls. The custom of acting out significant events from Krishna's life as a uh, Ras Lila is considered to have begun almost 300 years back mainly in the geographical areas that are associated with Krishna's mythology uh, which would be uh, the uh, the current state of Uttar Pradesh, right. So, Ras Lila is a style of folk dance or theater which is uh, popular in the northern part of India and uh, in this uh, theater form well known incidents from uh, Krishna's life are acted out on stage uh, in both solo and group dance settings accompanied by loud instruments, uh, you know, elaborate singing and recitations. So, the traditional uh, tales are told and performed in Ras Lila's uh, drawing on uh, some of the uh, prominent Hindu scriptures, particularly the Bhagavad Purana, the Bhagavad Gita, as well as. Uh, some of the devotional literature such as Gita Govinda, Jaydev's Gita Govinda. So, Krishna here is mainly depicted as the main deity and the protagonist uh, as a young hero and a divine trickster. So, the Ras Lila is one of the highest and uh, most esoteric of Krishna's pastimes according to uh, the Krishna Bhakti tradition. Here, the romantic love is uh, seen as uh, a reflection of a higher form of love. The devotee's souls, you know, original uh, ecstatic uh, desire to be one with the God, with the devoted. So, the uh, earthly love uh, between Radha and Krishna is uh, a reflection of or it signifies a ethereal form of love between uh, devotee and the God. And we need to understand that here uh, Krishna is not the figure of a uh, shrewd politician or a, uh, even uh, a serious uh, individual uh, you know dealing with uh, state affairs. Uh, the, the figure that one sees in Mahabharata. Rather, Ras Lila emphasizes on the figure of Krishna as a cowboy, as a lover, as a flirtatious and um, charming male that is loved by all the gopis and especially by Radha. People scorn and scoff at him, but people cannot really uh, you know, uh, dismiss him uh, and uh, everyone uh, and, and so he enjoys the attention especially of the women folk uh, due to his uh, charming uh, spirit and appearance. 
in the Ras Leela's uh, actors and gods enter the stage at the same moment and in the same bodies, right. So, this once again uh, symbolizes the human like uh, uh, you know nature and feature of the God, right. So, God can be human and human can be God that is the sentiment that is the essence that plays in most of the theatre forms in India especially the folk theatre forms. The dual perspective uh, on theatre and religion goes beyond the ideas of persona and performance in order to present God on stage not as a metaphor, but as a uh, tangible, tactile, palpable uh, reality. So, God is not something that needs to be contemplated uh, as, as part of the abstract, abstruse idea. God is out there on the stage as a figure, as a human form. That is at the heart of Krishna Bhakti tradition. So, they are coming from the Sagun school, right? They uh, understand God as part of the uh, sensory world, the sensory human like anthropomorphic God. So, a number of scholars have uh, researched on Ras Leela and have written at length about the public Ras Leela performances that are held each year in the pilgrimages of Vrindavan, Vrindavan being the heart of all the Krishna devotees in India. So, uh, they describe elaborately regarding the arrangement of the stage, the elaborate costumes and costume making process, the stylized gestures and dance practices and forms, the special convergence of private worship and public performance uh, and the extensive literary repertoire uh, that inform the romantic dialogues taking place uh, on stage. So, the tradition of Ras Leela is credited to three prominent uh, Vishnu Bhakti saints, Ghumandev, uh, Hitharivansh and Narayan Bhatt. So, Ghumandev, Hitharivansh and Narayan Bhatt, all these three prominent uh, saints uh, built uh, it upon earlier folk customs and the Kathak dancing technique, right. The troupe of Ras Lila typically consists of uh, five musicians, a swami or a group leader, two boys that are aged between 11 and 13 years who portray Krishna and Radha and then we have a group of boys uh, aged between 8 and 10 uh, who portray the gopis or the cowherd girls who are important in the in these exploits and miracles uh, uh, you know being uh, narrated from Krishna's youth. Uh, the figure of jester or clown is also prominent uh, and these figures you know the supporting roles such as the jester are uh, sometimes played by the adult men who also play music who are also musicians in the performance. So, Ras Leela is inspired by Bhakti literature written in devotional Braj language. In fact, uh, the Braj uh, language, Braj Buli became popular uh, primarily because of this folk theatre form, through this uh, folk theatre form. Nearly every significant moment in Krishna's life has been depicted uh, in a dramatic form or through a Leela. The verses are sung aloud by the group's Swami, who is uh, usually a knowledgeable Brahmin priest uh, and following him, uh, it is acted out on stage by the performers. So, here also we see that the stage becomes a religious site, the stage flows into uh, the concept of spirituality and religion and uh, elements of religion are part and parcel of the theatrical performance. Throughout the play, the uh, supporting characters such as the clown or the jester are supposed to speak their own lines. Five musicians often uh, sit in a 
semicircle form between the acting arena. They perform using a number of uh, you know instruments such as harmonium, a hand drum, cymbals and uh, sarangi, sarangi which is a string instrument. The bhakti culture of the area is reflected through the local musical renditions. There are two portions in a Ras Lila. One is the dance performance, the Ras dance and then the Lila performance which is the theatrical or the play part. So, Ras refers to dance which is performed first followed by the Lila play which happens next which follows. So, about 3 hours are de uh, dedicated to this entire performance. Depending on the requirements of the specific performance, a variety of Leelas are available for uh, selection and rituals and fastings are performed prior to the performance which makes the actor something more than an artist. So, the actor's body needs to be purified in order for him to be able to uh, uh, embody Krishna. Uh, representing the God uh, uh, entails some kind of uh, you know prior rituals. So, the artist is uh, kind of uh, impersonating or uh, it is almost like being possessed by the God. The artist does not remain a, a performer alone he becomes something more than that. So, since the concert is thought of as a religious supplying, the orchestra members are not permitted to consume any food or beverages uh, while uh, performing. Just like I was saying, uh, it is not only a stage act uh, taking place, it is almost bringing the gods down. And, and impersonating and being possessed by them. It is through human forms that gods are acting. So, the bodies of the performers need to be uh, purified. They have to go through certain rituals prior to the performance of Ras Leela. So, while the sacred Ras Leela is typically performed in the temple courtyard, the secular Ras Leela can be enacted in the streets. The real performance area is separated from Krishna and Radha's throne by a two-sided stage and backgrounds are usually painted with gorgeous lotus ponds and uh, forest vistas are also frequently used. So, so one feels that one is in a uh, in an ambience that reminds one of Vrindavan, right? So, one sees that similarities exist between uh, Hindu ritualistic practices and Ras Lila performance, particularly uh, with regard to the philosophy of Darshan. Darshan or Darshan, which is uh, usually interpreted as visions or glimpses of the divine. So, on the stage, there is a sthula or resident god statue, a statue of Krishna which is uh, thought by the Vaishnavis as uh, Krishna's uh, archabigraha form or the physical representation of his divine presence. The archabigraha also known as a murti or divine image is typically kept hidden by a curtain in order for the audience who are all devotees to see him and in turn be seen by him and get his blessings. So, it is only a glimpse of Krishna uh, uh, that is sometimes shown, otherwise he is the, the Archavigraha or the Murti is hidden behind the curtains, right? And then uh, like I was saying the attendant pujari occasionally lifts the curtain in order to display the God. So, uh, it is uh, there are certain, uh, so we see that there are sudden uh, rapturous moments when the, uh, the, the phenomenon of darsan can happen when uh, God sees the devotee or the audience and the audience or the devotee can see him back. 
there is a kind of spiritual consummation uh, through these moments, through these ecstatic rapturous moments when the veil is lifted and the God can be uh, seen. Taking or receiving darshan therefore uh, refers to the ritual viewing of the archa vigraha. We have the figurine of Krishna on the stage covered and occasionally revealed to the public eye and then we have the human form of Krishna in the form of the artist who enacts the different exploits from Krishna's life, from Krishna's uh, myth, from the different chapters, uh, you know, uh, drawing on uh, Bhagavad Purana and Bhagavad Gita as well as Gita Govinda. Next, we are going to talk about our uh, second uh, folk theatre form today, which is Ghumar from Rajasthan. Rajasthan's traditional and fervent folk dance is called Ghumar. The word Ghumar traces its origin uh, to Ghumna in Hindi. So, Ghumna is the source of this name, the name of this magnificent art form. Uh, in this dance, which is performed by a group of women, uh, the colors of the ladies uh, or the women's flowing skirts uh, are uh, play a very important role. Uh, because the, the gestures are mainly centering the act of uh, pirouetting, uh, you know, pirouetting or constantly rotating in circular motion. So, as the dancer rotates, the colorful flowing long skirts locally known as ghagras would also rotate and it uh, lends a very uh, colorful, a very uh, bright uh, ambience. Uh, uh, through the performance. So, on occasions such as festivals, religious ceremonies and weddings, Ghumar is frequently uh, performed or executed. The dancers faces are concealed by a veil as uh, they swirl in uh, swift circular motions with an astonishing elegance while their uh, long skirts or gagaras, uh, you know, slowly flare. So, Ghumar also known as Jhumar is performed mainly in Rajasthan. Women from all age groups uh, execute this dance form which involves simple swaying motions. The dance's uh, captivating element is its uh, exquisite footwork complemented with very colorful uh, attires. Uh, you know, uh, so so the 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 attires, the women's dresses play a very important role in enhancing the visual effect, right? Uh, so, and as the ghagras or the skirts flow, the footwork can uh, be better exhibited. This dance has no time restrictions, and it uh, can go on as long as people want uh, to uh, continue the entertainment as long as the merrymaking continues. So, uh, Ghumar was first practiced uh, for the purpose of honoring goddess Saraswati and was initiated by the Bhil tribe, the Bhil community, uh, a tribal group from Rajasthan. Now, the Bhil tribe was uh, conquered by the Kachwahas uh, of the Rajput uh, dynasty who controlled Jaipur. So, afterwards, if we look at history, we would see that uh, both the Rajput clans and uh, the Bhil tribes uh, coexisted and shared this dance form. So, although it originated among the tribals, it was also accommodated by the uh, Rajputs. So, several of Bhil customs and traditions like Ghumar were adopted by the royal Rajput clans. The dance was afterwards uh, even connected with uh, the regal lineage, the royalty. So, uh, in uh, contemporary times, uh, Ghumar is carried out by a majority of Rajasthani families regardless of their uh, regal origin. Uh, and it is uh, mainly performed on important occasions and festivals such as Tij, 
uh, Holi, the beginning of the monsoon season called Bhadu and the entrance of a newlywed bride in her marital home. The key areas that are known for this dance style uh, include Jodhpur, Udaipur, Kota and Bundi. So, Goomer is a dance that is primarily performed by Rajput women and hence it is clearly a female and caste caste specific pastime and hence and hence it is a female and caste specific uh, pastime in today's Rajasthan although its roots uh, trace back to the Bhil tribe. During Ghumar, uh, two or more Rajasthani women veer in opposite directions at the same time effortlessly and gracefully moving in circles. This dance is performed by women like I said whose faces are covered uh, by veils uh, and they wear vivid colorful attires that uh, covers virtually all of their body uh, except for their hands and uh, their feet. The women uh, frequently wear expensive jewelry. Uh, if they are coming from upper caste backgrounds, they would particularly wear uh, you know some expensive jewelry, particularly anklets or ghungru, uh, bracelets and necklaces. Uh, anklets are worn to make uh, melodious uh, noises uh, accompanying the dhol beats. As the dhol beats, the uh, anklets or ghungru uh, complement the sound of the drum. A few Ghumar uh, compositions are frequently sung by ensembles of uh, outcasts too. So, even the lower caste musicians can participate in the Ghumar performance, most notably the Dholis, the Langas, and the Manganiers after the dance, right. So, a few Ghumar compositions are frequently sung by ensembles uh, that originate from the lower castes or even from the outcast uh, social groups uh, such as the Dolis, the Langas and the Manganiers. Although Ghumar used to be primarily associated with the Rajput women, currently women from all castes and groups participate and enjoy this dance form and its music during festivals and social gatherings in Rajasthan. So, the Ghumar dance form is unique in that different regions of the state of Rajasthan have left their mark on the motions of this dance style. This is to say that the nuances of uh, Ghumar, the intricacies of dance form change a little with each region have their own speciality or their own uh, intricate uh, gestures. Due to uh, this dance form's proximity to uh, Gujarat, Udaipur lends Ghumar a distinctive Garba flair. So, Garba is a dance form uh, observable and you know popularly practiced in Gujarat and uh, we see Udaipur uh, drawing on the uh, Garba style of dancing, the Udaipur uh, Ghumar drawing on the Garba style of dancing practiced in Gujarat. So, the limb movements uh, are more vigorous in the Ghumar practiced in Rajasthan such that uh, the, the dancing form in Jodhpur is uh, jerkier, it is uh, it, it, it happens with certain jerks, jerky movements. The Kota Bundi region's uh, dance style is uh, vibrant and it is uh, complemented uh, with certain catchy musical dance forms. The Ghumar forms practiced in Marwar is typically performed at the wedding ceremonies and its numerous rituals uh, such as uh, the ladies Sangeet are representations of uh, womanhood and celebration of femininity. So, it is uh, an all female uh, cosmos or microcosm that we see uh, being uh, celebrated through the Ghumar uh, dance form. In the contemporary times, women can be seen wearing uh, chaniya, stunning chaniya on the 
performance day. These garments come in use in different uh, bright hues such as red, green, uh, pink and so forth and have intricate embroidery or mirror work on them. So, the dress itself is uh, a, 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 an art, the dress itself can be seen as a text and a narrative in its own right which carries the heritage, which carries the uh, culture and heritage from uh, the region. Uh, it, it carries the history and the culture of Rajasthan as well as Gujarat. So, there is a lot of mirror work in the uh, performer's dress, uh, gota or lace on a piece of fabric with a translucent color and the broad skirts allow for twirling and flowing movements. Here we also need to understand that uh, humor which sometimes draws on uh, the garba dance form could symbolize the cosmic movements. The, the you know constant uh, rotation by the uh, performers uh, could emulate uh, the planetary movements. And uh, we see these movements uh, very prominently in the case of Garba, right? Rotation and revolution uh, taking place simultaneously. So, uh, you know, it could be that the macrocosm is being represented through the, uh, the, the microcosmic body, its spiritual uh, relevance lies there, right. To enhance the flow of the dress, cotton uh, chaniya are typically chosen, although uh, depending on uh, the occasion, the dancers can also wear uh, other uh, materials, other fabrics such as silk or chiffon. So, chaniya and veils frequently uh, feature some very uh, rich uh, hand woven uh, zari work uh, and uh, the, the choli are typically basic and solid color and the uh, blouse or choli are typically basic and one solid color. So, with this we come to the end of this lecture where we have discussed two prominent and very popular uh, folk dance forms, uh, folk theatre forms. One is uh, Ras Leela, the other is Ghumar. I will meet you again with another round of discussions in another lecture. Thank you.